Hi guys, Aceface here, back with another Tyranny video for you and this is my final, you'll probably be quite pleased to hear, my final video on my Road to Throne Skulls. Now this is a warning, warning for you guys now, if you get bored easily um, and you don't like the sound of my voice then I hope I don't annoy you too much because this is going to be quite a long video. Um, and there's a few reasons why it's going to be pretty long um, but I've got quite a lot to tell you so this is a sort of video that probably best if you're sort of doing some painting or you've got nothing better to do because it's not going to be a quick one um, because as I said I've got quite a lot to go through and as you guys probably know that have kind enough to watch my videos I do go on a bit but I will try and be decisive as I possibly can. Um, but as you would have seen from the last video, the last video was about a day before Throne of Skulls. And as you would have seen in that video, I promised you lots of videos up at Warhammer World. <laughs> and that didn't go so well. I have got some, uh, some pictures and I'll put them up, most probably the best place to see them is on my Facebook page so check out them because that's probably the best place to see the pictures that I took and at the end of this video I'm going to do a um, showcase of the army that I brought with some really good pictures courtesy of a good friend um, so you'll, uh, you'll see some good pictures of the army so if you just want to see the army I have no issues at all if you just fast forward into the last 20, 30 seconds, minute, maybe two minutes, and you'll get to see um, the army that I brought and some cool pictures of the hard work I put in in the journey to Throne Skulls. But what I want to talk to you, I want to talk to you about the actual competition itself and the, the weekend as a whole to give you a kind of... Uh, a step by step of what happened and and, and how it went because um, hopefully you've, if you've watched this far and you've been bored to tears with my videos over the last few weeks and months you'll be interested to know how I got on and how the tournament went um, and that's what I'm going to let you know so after getting up crack of dawn on the Friday um, and picking up a buddy, we flew down to or down to up to to uh, Nottingham to Warhammer World, and we probably got there around about lunchtime, and we thought we'd get a quick game in straight away. So my friend took his disgustingly nasty build of a Chaos Space Marine um, army complete with Warhound Titan with Turbo Laser Destructor Nasty D weapon um, and the normal cheese of a Helldrake and some cultists and some other stuff so we had a game straight away which was cool because it was actually the first time I got to get the Harridan on the table um, and well if the guy looked awesome, so it was straight away it was exciting to get the uh, the Harridan on the table and pit its wits against another super heavy. So we had a game, and as I can't suspect it, one of the problems well, some people call it a problem um, with super heavies is the games are incredibly short. So within 45 minutes, we'd got through five turns of a game and it was all over. And the Harridan was very impressive. Thankfully for me, as it always is, um, the luck of the draw meant that I kind of got first turn, I got up in the air, I got out of the void shields and I managed to stay in the air um, and that was pretty much what won me the game because I knew that if I was on the ground the Harridan would have been obliterated by D weapons which is always going to be the fear with the new um, escalation rules and the fear of D weapons. 
but I managed to stay in the air long enough to get close enough to get in range of charging and then more or less the Harridan just mints the Warhound um, which is kind of inevitable really um, it's that's the, the Warhounds are great but when they get in combat they're, they're not going to last very long uh, so I got the win which was great little practice little warm up um, then probably about four o'clock the rest of um, the kind of group that I, I, I play in they all turned up with all their armies um, which was cool to see so we got to see a lot of the other cool stuff that was uh, starting to come out I had a cheeky little game against um, a very standard orc list um, which I would have thought I would have absolutely minced but due to probably me taking it for granted and just expecting to win I actually got a draw um, and actually I was quite lucky to get the draw which was, should have been should have been the wake up call that I needed but it wasn't um, as you will soon find out so I got a draw Gaz Cole absolutely cut up the Harridan and he ripped him to shreds so that's that was that was a definitely a wake up call that this guy is definitely not invincible um, and can quite easily be taken out particularly in combat against something with a lot of AP3 or higher so um, so yeah but I still managed to get a, get a cheeky draw um, and that was that then played a good mate of mine um, Liam and L Liam is possibly the only person I know that can pick a more disgusting list than me um, and he's a fantastic player a really really good guy he's won a lot of uh, best player um, in this tournament previous and he brought his disgustingly nasty uh, blood angel drop pod list with uh, space marine allies it's horrible absolutely horrible um, it was a build that I wasn't really too up to speed with my deployment wasn't awesome and the problem with a list like that is there's nothing on the ball to start off with and he kind of drops half his units first turn drops the second half um, second turn basically um, and he just picked off the soft stuff so the the hive tyrant and the uh, and and the, the chrome were just minced and um, then he turned about making use of the Herodon and that game was over pretty quickly um, and it was a lesson in actually what you can do um, so those of you out there who kind of think well I don't like the whole escalation style soup heavies well actually with a well rounded list and a list that's really capable of dealing with with super heavies actually you don't need to take them you have to plan around facing them but you don't need to take them and by taking a list that's great at just dealing out that that pain early and quickly and getting in there um, he had nothing to fear from me at all um, and going forward in the tournament he had nothing to fear about full stop um, so definitely all of you guys out there that think well, it's a waste of time with these tournaments because actually super heavies are going to win every time. Well, that's that's clearly not the case, and I I learned that firsthand on the Friday. So after that, um, we kind of done a lot of drinking, a lot of drinking, followed by more drinking, followed by a bit more drinking. Um, and actually, a lot of the uh, the guys were a little bit sorry for sorry for themselves come Saturday morning um, but anyway um, so we go into Saturday so we got up early Saturday we stayed around the corner and we got back to Warhammer World probably about half eight nine o'clock in the morning a little bit bleary eyed and ready for a gate for a day of gaming um, those of us that hadn't um, registered registered we got some cracking breakfast and if anybody has ever been um, you'll know that the breakfasts at Warhammer World in, in, in the Bugman's Bar are awesome um, never do let you down when you really need to pick me up after a hard <laughs> night's drinking so we got that I mean um, the the names of the uh, 
the games and the tables all flopped up on the board um, and it's crunch time it's, it's time to, to, to go to work so my first game um, my first game was against uh, Chaos Space Marines um, and it was quite a soft draw for me um, Play a lovely guy, really top bloke, uh, fairly new to the game really. I mean, played a lot of 5th edition but hadn't played a lot of 6th edition. He had a quite a, 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 a very kind of basic list, if you like, bit of everything. Um, sort of bit of cultists, sort of some terminators, um, hellbrew, forge fiend. Um, Hell Drake, um, that spawns, but quite a sort of a mixture, a nice little well, well rounded list, but nothing too scary. He brought a, a void shield generator, um, which which is a sensible thing if you want to kind of protect, particularly against the super heavies and not taking out your your important stuff first turn. So nice little opener for me. It was a, it's always nice to play a good good guy, and he um, was a nice bloke to play. It it wasn't as easy as it as as potentially it, it should have been. Um, thankfully, the Harridan is awesome at taking out um, vehicles and uh, walkers, so I dispatched the frightening stuff pretty quick. Um, but what I did really really struggle with, and one thing that I I, I kind of did struggle with throughout the weekend is actually his unit of terminators which had the little deal of Abaddon yeah so not necessarily a competitive unit is Abaddon I mean most people don't take him he's quite a lot of points and actually foot slogging not particularly quick and he, he can be in trouble but but actually he's still a beast in the right circumstances and he was a beast he pretty much just trudged around dispatching anything close by um, and I kind of managed to draw him into no man's land because I realised that quite early in the game I wasn't going to be able to to really deal with him um, but he he did shred everything he got the opportunity to shred and he really was an issue because I didn't have anything to deal with him particularly um, which which was difficult I took a bit of a gamble and I tried to assault something close to him with the Harridan to try and get my stomps off and maybe get that lucky stomp on, on, on Abaddon to remove from play because that would have bypassed his Eternal Warrior special rule. Um, oh, a little bit complicated, but, but that was my tactic. As it was, I'd done enough damage, I was still sitting on the objectives that I needed um, with my warriors to to get the win first off, but it wasn't a foregone conclusion and actually possibly it should have been from the matchup. But that was my first game, so I came away with, with, with the first first win. My second game... God, I've got such a bad memory. Um, and actually, if we, we digress a little bit, I started to try and get some film footage, and then I realised my camera had no batteries in it. So I had about, and actually, maybe if I can get my editing sorted, I'll actually kind of put in maybe this tiny little clip, which was about all I got before I um, it, it my camera went. So if I can get it right, you'll probably see the clip around about now. <laughs> Either you've just seen me pause or you've seen the clip so that was kind of my initial bit that didn't really work um, so we went on to my second game and my second game was another really cool game <laughs> really fun fun game my second game was against um, space marines um, sort of uh, ultramarines with uh, an Imperial Knight and this was my first opportunity to play the Imperial Knight which was cool because um, I was kind of looking forward to getting a chance to pit myself up against one of them 
So what a great opportunity. Uh, beautifully painted knight as well. Um, hats off to the guide and um, done really well on him. And actually his army was beautiful. Um, and a nice, nice army. He had um, two of the uh, storm talons and one of the storm ravens. So um, heavy flyer presence. And then obviously his uh, his his, uh, his knight. So potential, some threat there for me. Um, he had a real strong unit of. Um, Hamanators sitting in his Storm Raven with his Librarian Warlord flying in to get them into assault, which could have caused all sorts of trouble. And he had a drop pod to drop in for an early first blood attempt. So that was kind of his his list. Now his problem was was my advantage. What the Harridan was awesome at. Um, and what is awesome at, and is probably the biggest kind of feather in his cap of of all things, is he is king of the sky. There is probably nothing in the game, in the whole of the game, Apocalypse, that, all, that can deal with Harridan's ability to deal with flyers. And, and that was his biggest issue, because more or less what happened, I got first turn, he had one thing on the board, his knight, and what the Harridan did was he just thumped 12 strength 10 shots into the night, took him down half of his whole points first turn. My second turn I thumped some more shots into him as he came at me, which was quite scary because if he got there, Jesus, he would have wrecked me a new one. Um, but but he, he didn't get that far because um, he just before he, he got to me in the third turn, um, the Harridan popped off half his shots at uh, at the knight, blew him up, and then shot another couple of well, shot his other round because you can split fire because he's super heavy. Shot the others at the Storm Raven containing the Haminators and the Librarian, blew the thing up, killed all but one of the, the Terminators and his Warlord by blowing up the the Storm Raven and one lonely terminator flopped to the floor um, and pretty much by that point it was lights out for him because the storm talons as effective as they can be and actually they obliterated my hive tyrant straight away after that to to to, to make up for it um, as much as they're a great little unit against the harridan they're just they're wasted because he just just turned around after after dispatching the Storm Raven the next turn and just went, well there's six shots at you, bang, and there's six shots at you, bang, and after that it, it was it was all over but the screaming. Um, but it was, I mean it was a fun game and it could have gone very differently if he'd got first turn and I wasn't as fortunate with my rolls. Um, if that knight is a presence, yeah, I mean, uh, the I wasn't bothered with the four up invon. It didn't concern me. But actually, what really concerned me was if he got where he needed to and managed to get in a charging range, and Harrington happened to be on the ground, I would have been in a hell of a lot of trouble. So that was my second game. So all good so far. So two out of two. Fantastic. My third game, the final game of day one. Um. And I played another Chaos Space Marine army allied with Imperial Guard. A real mixed match army. Um, not as enjoyable of, of a game. Um, nothing wrong with the, with the guy. I mean, he was a decent enough player. He was a good sport. He wasn't really up to speed with super heavies. And, and, and fair enough. Why, why should he necessarily be? Um, and I think he struggled and wrestled with the, 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 the sheer power that they present in the game now. And I think that frustrated him to a degree, which is fair enough, because I think a lot of people were finding that frustration. So, but anyway, on to the game. So what he had was he had, um, he had a Land Raider um, with some more Terminators in. Um, and his were, his... Chaos Space Marines were Night Lord themed, um, which were quite cool. So he had sort of one unit with a, his Chaos Leader, Lord, Lord, go with Lord, we'll go with Lord. Um, 
he had him and a unit of Terminators and they were in the Land Raider and they kind of flew at me as quickly as they could because they realised that their best chance of winning the game was to take out my warriors that were castled behind their uh, defence line. So they kind of flew at me. He had um, sort of uh, Imperial Guard sort of in, in their little transports just dotted here, there and everywhere which were great for scoring and actually again I learnt a valuable lesson pretty quick on that. He had some sniper rattling things, I think they're called. You can see I'm really into my Imperial Guard. Um, he had one of these Forge World um, kind of barrage Imperial Guard tanks that ignores cover. You'll probably know what it's called. But it's a cool little model. He sat at the back and sort of fired volleys over, which was which was not too bad, apart from I think he forgot all about it second turn and didn't really shoot him again. Um, but actually, a frustrating game for me because, again, I, I really, really didn't get my priorities right because I, I didn't focus on the right stuff. I realised too late in the game that actually he had a lot of troops choices and I didn't have many. And as much as nothing he really had in his army posed any threat to me at all. What I didn't realise was the threat that he had was sitting on objectives. Sitting on objectives and actually winning the game through that. The basic way, the, the, the thing that everybody should realise and the thing that I should know as a veteran player more than anything is my biggest threat as a small troop army, as you would have seen in my video, is if I don't deal with those troops I can be in trouble and he just played the basics, he played a very basic game and he did it well um, and come the end of the game we only got a draw because as much as I did so much damage to his army and I just obliterated him, we even went seven turns but I couldn't kill all his troops to get the win um, so we, we went for a draw, so a little bit frustrating because it's a game that I should have won 100% um, and I learnt a lot and make sure I need to prioritise on the right things um, and uh, and I didn't so you know I probably sailed my tournament away with that draw and if you're competitive enough and want to try and win everything um, and you want to try and go for the big prize as I do um, I was my own worst enemy and I deserved to come unstuck there because I didn't play it smart enough and you, you have to learn by their mistakes so Saturday night um, we had the uh, tournament pub quiz, which our team, the Squid Badgers, and we uh, we won that, which was really cool. It's all general knowledge and um, sort of name the pitcher and all that sort of thing. It's a lot of fun. Just a good excuse just to drink more in the bar and have a laugh with 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 your friends that you've been playing with all day. So another great part of the tournament. Um, but it was pretty cool to win, you know, it just shows that we know lots of pointless, useless information about a fictional game. <laughs> um, but it was, um, it, was, it, it was cool to win. So that was the Saturday evening, we went on afterwards and don't really know what happened the rest of the evening, but it was, it was a late one. So we woke up Sunday morning, even more blurry eyed, um, and two games left. So two games left, what can we do in those two games? So, my fourth game, I came up against a beautiful, and I mean a beautifully painted Imperial Fist army. It was, it was stunning, it really was stunningly painted. Um, and it was a really fluffy themed army, it was very sieged siege um, themed which is as everybody well as everybody as people that know the fluff know imperial fists are all about siege mentality that's their kind of fluff so he had the kind of vindicators and the defense wall and yeah and it, it was really cool i mean it was a it was a great great looking army his um warlord was lysander badass lysander um don't see him much um any unit of Terminators again, we're seeing a theme here, Terminators not competitive, well they uh, they gave me a run for my money. So um, what happened, well basically I had first turn, he gave me first turn, um, I obliterated one of the Vindicators straight off the bat that was castled back in his um, 
um, in his deployment zone. Um, I got very lucky. It was night fighting. I happened to get the warlord trait that gives any unit within a certain distance of my warlord night vision. So my hive tyrant sat next to the um, the Harridan, and the Harridan just thumped the living daylights out of everything, um, which was very funny first turn. Um, so I caused real damage, caused real issues first turn for him. Um, then uh, he he decided not to deep strike in Lysander with his Terminators, and decided rather that he would. Um, stake out his side of the board but I think he then realised actually there was no point in me coming at him um, our objectives were both in our own deployment zones um, so I decided not to move so he realised quite quickly he had to do something about that and Lysander and his troops started plugging up the board um, as I slowly but surely decimated his entire army but this one unit and the reason why I left this Terminator unit is everything that I've got is either low AP or high AP, however you want to put it, um, or, or AP dash. So I had easy targets all around the ball. The Terminators with Lysanders would have been a tricky nut to crack. And because I had few units, I would have had to soak a lot of attacks and a lot of fire up on them. So I didn't do that. I pretty much pinned on everything else, which was fine because Lysander was a long way off. He got closer, and he got closer, and he got closer, until he got into my deployment zone, until he got in range of the warriors, until he charged the warriors, until he decimated the warriors, until he got in close to the unit of the second warriors. I started to panic at this point, because actually the game was in my hands, but actually Lysander him, in his own world was pretty much going to take this, this win off me. Um, so my hive tyrant, seeing the danger, jumped back, got out of flying mode, got within range of Lysander, I had to take a gamble and he charged Lysander and this was at turn four, first combat they pretty much stroke blow for blow um, and I took off all but one of Lysander's wounds, he took off two of the Hive Tyrant's wounds, locked in this challenge, locked in this combat up into, so we're going into turn 5, pretty much it all stood on this, if I could kill Lysander the game would have been mine, if he killed my Hive Tyrant he would have been able to contest, get my Warlord and be in my deployment zone, so this was all riding on this, more or less, turn 5, if the game had gone on potentially I probably would have tabled him, Haridan wasn't really too badly scratched at this point. But what happened? Well, this was epic and this is what the game is all about and actually you don't mind the game that goes down to this wire because it's exciting and this is what we all play for. But what happened? Hive Tyrant, he dug straight at Lysander, chopped him down. Lysander needed to make two crucial invon saves, two free up invon saves he had to make. If he made both them saves, he then had an opportunity to cut the Hive Tyrant down. What did he do? He made both of them saves. What did he do then? Brought his hammer down on the Hive Tyrant and squashed him like a bug. Not only did he then get Kill the Warlord, not only did he get Line Breaker for that, and not only did he get in range to contest my objective, but also, stupid me, forgot the Lysander's got a dodgy Warlord trait and another cheesy Space Marine Warlord trait that gives him D3 objective, um, victory points, that's the one, victory points, um, for each character he slays. Um, and so he got it and he rolled a 6. So he completely obliterated me, then we um, rolled to see if the game continued, and no it didn't continue, it ended, and actually he got a very well deserved win, um, and it's one of those things where I didn't play it too badly, it just came down to one dice roll, um, and, and it didn't go my way, but you have to take that on, but it was epic, it was very very um, narrative based, it was just a really cool game, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, and he was a good guy to play. Um, and yeah, it was a it was a good game. So at this point, obviously, it's game over for me as far as getting anywhere near winning. But that's okay. My last game, um, my most successful game, um, 
I went into the last game and I realised there was no more messing around. I had to be clinical and I had to take this one pretty seriously because there was no way that I wanted to go away with either another draw or another loss. Um, because I am competitive. Yeah, I am competitive. So I played an Imperial Guard list. Um, and the Imperial Guard list had a super heavy. It had, and I don't know what the name of this thing is, it's a Malkador or something, probably you know, but it's like a big um, sort of flamer, Hellstorm flamer. It's kind of got like a little trailer on it, looks like it's going on a holiday. Um, it's got like a big ass flamer, um, and yeah, it's it's probably very good. Um, so he had that, he had um, your standard kind of big unit, big blob unit of, of guards sitting behind a defence line. He had a, a Vendetta and he had a Vulture. Um, so already you're probably thinking to yourself, and yes, you'd be right. I was rubbing my hands together as far as thinking, yep, yeah, the skies are mine again. Um, and that's very much what happened. Well, I'm not going to milk it on this one, but um, I think I lost two wounds off Warriors and I obliterated him. Absolutely obliterated him. Um, again, he gave me first turn. I don't know why he is, they give you. F but anyway, he gave me first turn and the Harridan went straight after his Super Heavy because I knew the points were there, so I went after the Super Heavy. Fudded him first turn, took off half his whole point. Yet yeah, you can probably see a bit of a pattern going on here. He hid a little bit. I chased him second turn. I thumped him some more. Got him down to one whole point. Um, and then third turn, when his flyers came on again, I directed half the volleys at the super heavy, popping him. And then the other half went into the vendetta because I knew he had the las cannons. He was the one that was going to hurt the harridan more. Popped him off and then I could concentrate on getting rid of the Vulture. Um, but yeah, it was a very successful game. It was very clinical, um, because I was frustrated at that point that I had got a win and a draw, even though I can't complain. Um, but I really I wanted to make sure that I was clinical in that last game, and I was. So I completely uh, annihilated him. Um, but he was a good sport. Um, it, was, it was a fun game. And I got a lot of pictures of it, because probably from three quarters of the way through it was only going to go one way and by that point I was kind of just enjoying the the experience of being at Throne and Skulls because it's always good fun. Um, so there's, as I said there's quite a few pictures of that game on my Facebook page and that pretty much that was the end you know it ended as that so what were the scores on the doors well I came second Tyranny player which you know is not too bad, not too bad. So um, I got two player votes. So two of the people that I played against, um, I suspect the Imperial Knight player and the first player I played against, Chaos Space Marine player, voted me as their best game they played, which is a real accolade because particularly when you win a game and you still get someone voting for you, it's always nice, you know. Um, so that was cool. So just because of that, and because I did okay, I came second to a player, which was cool. The, the the funny thing was the the top tyranny player, who was also in our group, uh, a guy called James, um, really nice guy, brought possibly what I would have thought going into the tournament a very uncompetitive tyranny list, but awesome. He went pure fluff. He went for a vanguard strike. Data Slate type uh, list. He just had tons of Lictors, Death Leaper, tons of Steelers. Um, really cool army. Very, you just couldn't think how anyone would do well with it, particularly. But um, very effective. Knew how to play it. Knew, knew, knew that. See, I've been speaking too long. Knew how to play it and played it very well. So uh, he got five wins out of five. He got three player votes, um, and he won the tournament outright. So Tyranids for the win. So uh, I was chuffed to bits for him uh, because he's a lovely guy. And actually, if you take a list like that, 
that is actually very fluffy and not necessarily competitive and you get five wins out of five you deserve everything that you get and he certainly did so yeah I mean he probably won't watch this I don't think he watches my videos but if you if you are watching well done James um, awesome win awesome guy well deserved and I did pip him for the best tyranny player about a year ago so actually yeah uh, that's one all. I'll get you in the next one. Um, so that was my that was my tournament. Um, so yeah. So what what are my learns from it? Um, what I would say advice wise, I'd say if you are going to take the Haridan, or you can pretty much use this for any super heavy. You've very you've got to be very very clever with your um, target priorities because even though you've got a huge hard hitter you need to take out the right stuff at the right time now that might sound obvious but sometimes necessarily the big threat thing you've got to plan how long it's going to take you to get rid of it and actually sometimes factoring more at something smaller that's actually going to get them the points can be the target that you need to go for so I learned that a lot 100% what else did I learn? well I learned the Harrison's fun to play with he's a great 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 unit um, and actually not too heavily powered um, in escalation I mean yeah he, he, he he's great but I don't think he'd ruin anyone's game which is kinda cool because actually probably Revenant Titans and Double D Warhounds might well ruin other people's games I don't think I don't get the impression that the Harridan did that on any of my games which is cool because you don't want to do that you don't want to just annihilate somebody's hopes and dreams for a tournament just by playing something that's ridiculously overpowered well that's just my opinion anyway um, and what else did I learn um, charge your batteries particularly when you've promised people for the last month that you were going to show them videos of the tournament and you let them down sorry sorry guys um, hopefully the showcase that you're about to see of the army um, and the little chat that we've just had will kind of go somewhere towards letting you know how it all went um, but please do post any questions that you've got on the tournament if there's anything that you want to know then post it down below and again thank you very much guys for hanging with me um, as I will say, if you're still watching the video now, then appreciative, because I bet there aren't many people that have. Um, but thank you very much, and I hope you've enjoyed the journey. I've enjoyed it. I'll be doing the same again soon. So it's on by from one tournament and into the next one. What I'll do in the next one, who knows. Um, but, but thanks again, guys. I've run out of things to say, and you're probably bored. So I'm going to say goodbye and cheers. Thank you very much guys. Bye bye now.